I'm Rob. Um, I help to lead the engineering team at Lush. Uh, it used to be quite technical, now no longer as technical, uh, but probably hopefully technical enough to talk you through some of the slides. Um, so I'll give you a quick whirlwind tour of Lush. Um, some of our, our, our key tenets are we want to create a cosmetics revolution and save the planet. That's, that's one of our key goals. Uh, we're not just a, a cosmetics business. We have a massive digital business. Um, but, but, the, but probably 90% of our, our revenue comes from our, our, our sales in, in store. So we're a global retailer. Um, in production at the moment, we've got around 200 microservices. Um, so it's a, a, quite a large back end. And we, we process 160,000 transactions daily at, at peaks. Um, so I think the biggest challenges that we have at Lush are, are very similar to the ones that Kindred face, although ever so slightly different. So we've got uh, data sovereignty is a big concern for us. Uh, what with Brexit and things like the, the California Consumer Privacy Act, um, data jurisdiction is no longer a given. Like, what, what is a country? Like, there, there is no longer that concept anymore. You know, within the United States alone, you have different areas where you might have different laws. You know, California might be trying a GDPR-esque law. Therefore, we need to domicile data to a particular node in California. Therefore, you can never... Data is always evolving uh, with the laws. Um, our supply chain. So we, we want to own everything that we write. And at the moment, we, we own every aspect of our supply chain. And having a global database that goes along with that gives us a lot of flexibility in the way we process things. So that's having a global transaction store. That's having a global inventory store. It, it gives us some wiggle room and allows us to be a bit playful. Um, and resiliency is a, another key thing. I think with any users of CockroachDB or any modern scalable solution of anything in the cloud, uh, resiliency is, it should be key. Um, and downtimes for tills can cost us upwards of £300,000 an hour. So I think having data replicated across regions to cope with, with outages, of which there have been quite a few over the last couple of weeks, is, is key for us. We don't have a very big infrastructure at the moment for CockroachDB. So Kindred have quite a, quite a large infrastructure of Cockroach. At the moment, we have three nodes in Europe West 1 across availability zones. So, and this isn't in production yet. So one of the reasons I wanted to do this talk is to show that you know, I, I want people to, I'd love for people to, to volunteer talks, their learning experiences with, with Cockroach, just as I'd like to now with you. So I'll go through, um, I'll, I'll stand over here, it'll be controversial. Um, so this is currently where we are in our production environment for orders. So as you can see, uh, we've got a till system which is written in Kotlin, which runs on native Android, uh, an e-commerce website that is uh, React, Kotlin, Swift for the, the native devices. They talk to an orders backend which is written in Go, and that in turn talks to SpannerDB uh, in GCP. So that in turn talks to uh, some out of hours processing and in, and in hours processing uh, with various, various services that talk to one another. That's our infrastructure at the moment. So what we want to do is move away from Spanner. Uh, we're finding that Spanner is great for some things. Uh, it's very expensive. Uh, it's a black box solution. It's proprietary. It's owned by Google. You run in Google's infrastructure on their atomic clocks. Uh, exporting data out of, of Spanner is very, you have to have a very specific skill set in which to do that. You're not just talking a database language, you're talking, you know, Avro, binary Avro, it's a bit, it's a bit trickier. So this is where we're going to. Um, so first step will be to uh, write and reconcile data. So you'll see the introduction of a toggle service, that's also written in Go, everything we write in the back end is Go. Uh, a reconciliation service which will talk to a Grafana, for mo uh, Grafana service for monitoring and logging. Um, so the, the new process will be, we will start to write data to CockroachDB via the order service. And we'll reconcile data in there um, against Spanner. And that will allow us to move one store at a time. Rather than, I think the original plan we had was to, I, I can almost quote it verbatim, was try it overnight and pray it comes back up in the morning. And, and I, I, I don't, when, when you're talking about globally resi resilient databases, hoping isn't a strategy. So we're going to be moving each of our stores one by one. Try with one. If it works, great. We'll keep on rolling out. If it doesn't, we're, we're keeping data reconciled, and we can try a different approach. Next will be reading. So this will allow a store like Oxford Street, for example, to take their, their primary data from CockroachDB. 
once we're doing, once we're at this stage and once we've rolled out all of the, the stores to have their primary data sourced from Cockroach, we're done and we can get rid of Cockroach TV. Uh, Cockroach TV? We don't want to get rid of Cockroach TV. We want to get rid of Spanner. That's what we want to get rid of. So what I'll, I'll dive back um, over here because I'm going to do a bit of live coding in a sec. Uh, we, chose, we chose Cockroach TV at Lush basically for all the reasons Sandra has outlined. Uh, I think they're all extremely sensible reasons. Um, and another couple of, couple of the pools of our, for us was it's open source. We like to co contribute as much open source as we can. Um, we, we're an ethical company. We believe in giving back what we create, and that's exactly what Cockroach are doing. They, they are writing an open source, a huge open source platform, and it's, it, it's available to everyone to see and to contribute to. Uh, it's written in Go. We are a team of Gophers. We, we love the Go programming language. Uh, I personally think it's uh, the no-brainer solution for distributed systems in the modern day, where it makes sense, obviously. Um, and it allows us for smoother development of services. So we're going with the managed version of CockroachDB. I think we're one of the customers trialing the managed service, finding it works really well. Uh, and I think if you start to think of a database not as something that, like a pet, like you would treat a, a, a computer, a PC, a virtual machine, whatever, uh, as rather a virtual ephemeral thing that could go, could go away, but you're always able to talk to it in some way, I think that's a much better experience for developers if they're talking to a global virtual database that they don't have to care about. Uh, so no, more man uh, no admin headaches. We've got a very small data um, analytics team. They function primarily in ETL, um, but don't necessarily have the capabilities to manage a, a vast MySQL sharded, manually sharded environment. So having a managed solution takes that pinch right away from us. And we've developed a database partner with Cockroach. They, we, we see them a lot in our offices. Uh, we're, off, we're invited to go to their offices. It's, it's nice to have someone who you, who you can immediately talk to and know you're going to get immediate, an immediate response. They're, they're a partner of ours. If we were to do the same thing with Spanner, we would be at the mercy of whoever was available in, in Google at the time. We, we don't have as much visibility into Spanner. We can see the, the, the Cockroach code. If we fancy, we can, make, we can create PRs if needs be. Now, a shameless plug. So can I get a show? Do, do you, are you developers? Hands, hands up, developers? OK, so that's probably about 70%, roughly. Um, who develops databases that talk to database? Uh, who develops software that talks to databases? It's about 60%. Of you, who tests with production amounts of data? And who tests with production amounts of data during development? Okay, so we've got it down to about 7%. Um, what I'd like to talk about is this very, very quickly. It's an open source project that I created a little while ago called DataGen um, with a quick example um, as to why developing with production amounts of data is important. So the reason I created this is because the uh, uh, microservice that I wrote for, um, for Lush uh, it is talking, it will talk to CockroachDB. It's... Um, our global inventory management system, it's going to be globally replicated. And we're probably going to have in the order of millions of product entries in that database. So if you're, if you're developing a solution, you're testing against like a very small subset of data. Uh, let's say, let's run this application here. This is an application that I've got owners and pets, a very contrived example. Um, I pull 100 random owners out of the database and query for their pets. It's horribly contrived, and I apologize. But it takes, it takes 7.9 milliseconds to get 100 different records. You think that's probably, that's probably OK, we can, we can ship it. Um, but then you run, uh, then if you, if you were to test with the production amounts of data, as we're about to do now, sorry, you can, uh, that's really bad, it's just right at the bottom. I don't know if you can see the progress bar. That's done. I've just inserted 100,000 owners and, and 10,000 pets into the database. If we run that again, 1.4 seconds. So you can see from this, this database, there's, there's a problem. All it is, I've stripped out an index. But unless you're testing with production amounts of data, you're never going to know what, what's wrong with it. So that, that, was, that was it. I just wanted to, a little segue. I'll be happy to talk about it after, but that's not the purpose of, of today's talk. So I think in closing, um, I think we'd go around asking some questions. I think I'd really like to get some feedback from, from you all um, as to how today went for you, what kind of things you'd like to see in follow-up meetups, that'd be really useful. Um, and then we can discuss next steps. So are there any questions at this point for, for any of the presenters? Okay, 
that's fine. We're going to be hanging around after, either here, in here or in the pub. So if any questions come up and you want to ask them later, that's also fine. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you.